welcome to she means business and uh, as a new business or as a small business it is critical to bring in innovation because we we work with a lot of uh, unique disadvantages for example hiring people hiring the right people our budgets our marketing budgets my guest today is someone who has bought in a lot of innovation in her business and we'll understand from her how exactly she did it but before i go into that uh, if you're a woman business owner you must subscribe to this channel for tips stories and inspiration hi mona hi um so before we even begin tell us a little bit about what you do uh so i run pixites consulting which is a media research uh, uh, agency and uh, what we do essentially is we work with um, um online platforms we work with television channels with cinema houses production houses what we do is essentially we help them maintain uh, their content and uh, evaluate the content and basically help them keep engagement with the audience through their content so any kind of content and we're there and how long back did you start this i started this about 5 years no actually 6 years back in 2012 So when I first met you, um, this was at a panel discussion, and she was on the panel. And the topic of the panel, I remember, was innovation. And I really wanted to bring this topic up because for any new business or small business, innovation is critical if you're going to survive and if you're going to thrive, right? Correct. So I like the fact that you were able to bring in a lot of innovation in your business. I wanted to talk to you about that, you know, how you did it and what you did. Okay, so uh, essentially, if you look at any business, you know there are two key elements that we need to take care of. One is people, and one is processes. Okay, if you take care of these two things, and they sound very simple, but they are not. So, um, and also when I am on the topic of innovation in these two things, um, see, innovation need not be something which is very disruptive, and you enter and you've created this huge disruption in the industry. not really necessary you know you can make smaller innovations that actually make you stand out because how frequently do you really get those you know oh so disruptive ideas yeah but smaller innovations if you do it will end up being delighters to your clients and that is how you'll get new business and that is essentially what we've done at big sites okay so when we started out uh, so let me look at people first okay when i say people and processes um now people hiring for a startup is extremely difficult yeah because a um now i was coming from an mnc where we had all the resources in the world we would go to the top mba schools and myself was part of the hiring team there i don't think i ever thought about you know what the budgets were etc we would just take like the best resources available and train them and also spend a lot of amount on training now as a startup and i was working out of a room in my house that time i could not afford to get people who were not experienced i did not have the time or resources to really train them so what i was essentially looking for was experienced people now experienced people typically don't want to join a startup unless they have that fire or they they're very good friends of yours and want to collaborate so how do you recruit people for a startup now uh, at this point in time um i know a couple of us had this idea that okay um in our business especially what we'd seen was that um, um you know it's dominated by women a lot of women but mostly due to life stage you know people tend to kind of stop in the middle so say you know out of college there's a 22 year old girl who's come and joined us we train her completely then either the person gets married or uh, somebody has a baby which are all good things in life <laughs> but um, somehow there um, most of the time there's either a comma or a full stop in the career yeah but these are people who are trained and who have had that fire i mean they didn't want to work it's not like they don't want to but perhaps due to circumstances have not so what i did was i activated my network okay and i've been working for about 16 years before that so i had good network and um, managed to get on board people with at least 10 years experience who today perhaps because of some personal circumstances were not working now if uh, thankfully of course every person today now owns a laptop so one didn't really need them to come and be in office and i didn't really need people to come into office i just wanted people to deliver on time and i wanted quality work now what i realized is that this group of women are actually the people who are hungry for work and that hunger is i think what we capitalized on great quality of work i did not need to train them because they were super trained people super intelligent women and you know it kind of just really clicked because suddenly i had this workforce of absolutely fabulous women who were delivering on time 
and you know they didn't care if they had to work a weekend because for a mother um, you know weekend weekday it's all the same merges into one <laughs> so it didn't matter so if i had say four women working from monday to thursday the rest could actually work from friday to monday okay and um, you know it didn't really matter that much because um, a they were getting work you know they could put it on their um, cvs that yes i was working so it didn't seem like a break in their careers i was paying the industry standards that's not a, that wasn't a problem and uh, you know so they were getting some sense of fulfillment and uh, i was getting this you know really nice uh, uh, you know whole bevy of workers <laughs> with me so that was one part of it and that little tiny little innovation saying okay i'm not going to colleges i'm not going to so of course we did the usual thing with you know sending out uh, job descriptions on nokri etc etc did not work this worked really well for us still does we now have a whole network of about um, i would say about 35 36 women across india who are working for us who are you know somebody is in a nagpur somebody is in aurangabad somebody is lucknow somebody is in mathura It does not matter as long as you mail it to me. I don't need you to come into Bombay and sit in my office. You know, as long as you do your work well. Yeah. So that's one thing that's worked for us. Um, the second thing is about the processes. Now, um, see, we entered an industry which had many giants. Okay, we are in media research. Uh, the only thing was that all these giants also had many many other categories that they were looking at, whereas we were doing only media. so we could afford to innovate within this category say okay if this is the category that i am serving you know and uh, how do i kind of innovate within it now i knew from my earlier stint that uh, any any basic report that we send out uh, would take like at least a fortnight yeah but uh, what we did and by the time you know your tv show has done 15 episodes already so what report i'm giving them was actually a little redundant so we innovated within that yeah and we did things like simultaneous analysis we did online things so we could deliver reports the day after so we would do research one day and that was unheard of nobody had heard of like a report the day after so that was a huge delighter and it actually helped so much that within the industry you know we started out with uh, one channel as our client and today in 6 years we've actually worked with about 18 clients yeah and um, about eating channels that is and it's still growing and i believe it's all because of these smaller innovations that we've done in people as well as processes that's actually taken us towards this um, you know whole road really yeah i think uh, brilliantly said because innovations are possible in every industry and like you said it's not about disrupting it's about finding small small very creative very new very innovative things that you can do that will help you bring in the business that will help you bring in people people is such a huge problem everywhere i think you really cracked it and honestly this i I've, i've also done the same I, a lot of my team is also women who actually come back to work but there are, there are innovations in many many things that you can do you know whether it's your sales pitches uh, whether it is i know a lady who um, helps people uh, she's a content writer and she helps people with their resumes okay. and uh, the new thing that she's doing is video is big so she's helping people put together video a resume. one minute video resume that's innovation right yeah. very very interesting it's a resume but she's helping them put together a script which they can say in and then just sort of you know video it out so brilliant okay one question i wanted to ask you um you know this whole entrepreneurship thing you know i i've started something of my own you started something of your own but you know at what point i, I find this very interesting and i love to talk about this to people women especially at what point did you feel that this is what i wanted to do and why did you feel that way because i constantly hear things like um i'll be doing this on my own time maybe i'll have more work life balance or uh, i'll possibly make more money than i'm making in my salary so i just want to understand why you started at what point you started how did the whole thing happen the inspiration behind entrepreneurship needs to be right mm. otherwise you're never going to go in for the long haul at least that's my opinion mm. if you feel that it's you know simplistic reasons like i want a better work life balance you're not going to get it if you do it on your own mm. yeah it cannot be only for money because i mean i mean how much money can you make i mean yeah. after a while it's like mm. hey am i happy when i wake up mm. am i happy to be going to my office now if that office is a room in my home or a brick and mortar office i still need to be happy mm. going into that room yeah. so the essential thing would be um uh, in entrepreneurship it's like imagine a venn diagram of things i'm good at mm. and 
things I like to do हाँ. and then finding that common हाँ. ground. Yeah. If you can find that sweet spot hmm. and I think I'm lucky enough to have found it hmm. that uh, obviously after 15-16 years I think I'm reasonably good at research <laughs> and I like doing it. Yeah. You know you cannot just think hey this is a great idea but you actually hate doing it. Yeah, some you know, love it. It's a great yeah. idea, it's making me money but I hate doing it hmm. you know and then that's not going to be a long term plan. Yeah. So that sweet spot is very critical. <gasps> so what next for you? You've been in the business for 5 years now, what yeah. next? So the idea being, see, we want to constantly innovate, yeah, mm-hmm. and um, so now, see, there's a time and place for those smaller innovations, and mm-hmm. then there's a time when you've actually settled in, when you can be disrupted. Mm-hmm. So we've actually started some new products right now, because mm-hmm. the industry is going, veering away from traditional research towards artificial intelligence, yeah. machine learning, it's moving towards online research. So we've actually now um, invested, we've uh, learnt, started learning ourselves yeah, because you have to keep educating yourself. It's not only doctors who have to keep <laughs> updating yeah, themselves yeah, yeah, because um, because there's a lot of churn. So what we've done is, so um, we've, for example, our latest uh, thing that we've come up with is um, an award, a voice uh, audio content recognition tool mm-hmm. uh, that actually helps uh, people kind of track the impact of promos. Oh. It's it's an app that we've designed ourselves in house, okay. so uh, collaborating with the tech team. Okay. So that's a very disruptive thing in the industry. Then, um, uh, see for example, people are kind of shifting towards uh, OTT, which is your online content today. Mm. And we are all about content. If it's online, we follow. Mm. Yeah. So I don't necessarily need to work only in TV. So we are veering towards online now. We have a lot of online clients currently, um, you know, and uh, what we've done is just to kind of get a sense of the entire thing. We've done a whole syndicated research. The report was actually released yesterday, which is a very comprehensive understanding of who is this customer who's actually going towards uh, OTT content, mm-hmm. what do they like to see there, and a comprehensive numbers and all of that. Because currently nobody has numbers. Um, just, I just want to go back to one thing that you said before. Um, when you hire people who work with you on a flexible uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, timing or who don't come to office, like initially you had that whole thing where people are not even coming to office. Mm-hmm. It's a question that I've faced from other people. It's a question even I have. Uh, is there a sense of... Um, I don't know whether to call it lack of control or is it a sense of you know uh, so you know these people are not with you I know a lot of people now work on flexi uh, this thing but do we still feel a little uncomfortable with that whole process where you know people are not in front of you and you don't know whether or is it just about work getting done on time you know so how get where you're coming from see Hmm. it'll have to be flexi at one end Hmm. it cannot be flexibility at both ends Hmm. so that control needs to be there Hmm. okay yeah because because, you know so they can be flexible time but Hmm. they need to with the Meet the deadline. Yeah. You work yeah. whenever you like. I don't care. Hmm. I don't need you to come here and work. Hmm. You work at night. You, uh, if you've told me tomorrow morning I'll give you this, it needs to be with me tomorrow yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah, so we actually have made a gradation system where is this person consistently not on time? After three red marks, we stop giving work to that person. Oh, that yeah. way. Yeah. Because that otherwise there's no accountability. Yeah. 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 What I like about the fact that you're doing this is that a lot of uh, flexible work happens in industries like writing, if you have to come back, or various other industries. But yours is not so. You have clients yeah. and you have yeah. to meet those deadlines and you come back with reports. Yeah, yeah. But you're actually making flexi work, see, work what, there as well. Yeah, see what we do is, so for example, I have a ops person hmm. who basically is the central kind of node who right. connects all these people together. Right. So she kind of makes sure that, hey, is this person available and hmm. can deliver? And we have a formal contract saying, listen, you need to deliver this time. Right. So, um, if they don't deliver, then obviously we can't give them work. Huh. But I think over the years now, we've managed to get a group of people who hmm. we've had problems also. Right. Uh, but <laughs> well, I'm as sure. with any I'm system, sure. when yeah. you do this system, yeah, yeah. But I think now problems. we've managed to, um, yeah, we've actually now started a training uh, cell also. So, not right. necessarily ex researchers. Huh. Uh, so, for example, you get a lot of um, women, say, who are not working currently, hmm. might not have been researchers. Hmm. We've actually started training ah. them because even yes. our work has increased. Hmm. So, only the ones that we have in our network is not something that we can, hmm. you know, bank you upon. Outside the network. Yes. So, we've started a training cell. Hmm. This also helps now is because about two years back we finally bought ourselves an office hmm. so uh, we have a brick and mortar office now so there's a place for us to train people and um, so see 
as you grow, you need to grow in all of these buckets yeah. again. Yeah. So you have to grow in people. So now we have some people. So everybody is not flexi right now. Mm. So there are at least say seven to eight people who have to come into office every day. Yeah. Yeah. Because now it's bigger. You cannot have everybody on flexi time. Mm. Yeah. So yes, there is you know a large amount of people there. But uh, one has to innovate and that control has to be there because right. otherwise you're not running a business. <laughs> right. One more question. You know, since I speak to a lot of women entrepreneurs, I keep hearing a lot of queries and concerns. So one big concern is, um, so hiring is definitely one concern. Uh, scaling up is another concern. The third concern that I keep hearing about is actually new business development. So you're really good at your work and you've decided that, you know, this is what you want to do. And, you know, you, you've got a great product and you're hardworking. But getting the first few clients in, because a lot of times, you know, these women don't have, like, I didn't have a sales background, yeah. right? But when you start out, you don't really have a team to help you, you know, yes, reach yes. out to people. Absolutely. and do So you reach out to your network initially and you reach out to people you worked with earlier, all of that. But the new business uh, development also becomes a challenge. So was that a challenge with you? And did, or did I've been it come a little lucky on that front. In the industry? Uh, yeah, I think I've been a little lucky on that front. Um, on both fronts, actually. One is I've been in the industry for a while. So mm. the networking was with people who had seen my work and mm. were willing to give work. Mm. And um, secondly, I um, personally also had a lot of... Uh, you know, people that I knew in TV channels, etc. Yeah. So when I decided to start out, yeah. um, being a researcher, I did that first round of research, but I actually called the people and said, hey, I'm thinking of something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's going to work? So yeah. just asking industry insiders, is there a market for something like yeah. this? That's because, you know, first thing I was like, you know, is there a market or am I just, you know, saying, ah, I'm going to do this big thing and everybody's yeah. going to start making a beeline for me. Um, so I talked to about 10-15 people, what we call a dipstick study and mm. I figured that hey, nobody is really specializing in this. Interesting. There's, there was just one company which was mm. specializing and they did a lot of quantitative stuff. Mm. So not too much of qualitative. So I'll tell you an interesting thing that happened. Um, uh, Hindi serials in our mm. country today, uh, if you look at the elite, you know, your A plus kind of women, there are a lot of, see, 80% of the audience is housewives still. Mm. But I realized that a lot of women who are working, who are, you know, thoda elite types would say, oh my God, you watch those <laughs> Hindi shows. Yeah, and there's this kind of looking down upon it that happens. So uh, when I was, um, you know, working on this serial once, and this was before starting on my own, I realized that uh, this researcher that I had put on the job, and she'd done a whole report on the show, had not seen a single episode of the show. Oh. So obviously her insights were so shoddy, because she's not taken the trouble to watch the show, and then she very happily tells me, oh my god, I cannot watch these Shaz Bahu shows without realizing that, hey, the Shaz Bahu shows are watched by 80% of women. You know, so where are you coming from? <laughs> and therein lied, uh, lay the differentiator because there was no senior person who was able to give insights watching these shows. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the amount of qualitative insights was not there. Even today, there are very few senior people who actually watch the shows. Yeah, so and even the juniors, of course, are never going to watch it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so that watching of content is something that we make as a rule for all the people who work with us. So you have to watch at least two hours of TV every day. Now, if it's a horror show like a Kayamat Ki Raat or something like that, I don't care if it puts you off or whatever, you have to watch it if you want to work with us. Yeah. That's one condition we put down on everyone who works. Yeah, because, because if you don't you're watch doing content, research on that product. Yes, you your insights cannot be valuable yeah. if you give, you know. For example, I remember in the initial days, there was this client who came and told me, What do you mean by saying the hero heroine don't have chemistry? What am I supposed to do about it? Huh. You know, and I was like, there's no spark. <laughs> and he said, what's a spark? <laughs> I said, can you please define and tell me what to do? <laughs> Rather than saying, so I had a whole slide saying, hero, hero, do not have yes. chemistry. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that so, sounds like a fun job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I don't know fun. if I can consume two hours of <laughs> television to... Yeah, uh, so that's... That. See, mm -hmm. one has to kind of... You have to do, do that. It. And it's an effort sometimes. Mm -hmm. It is an effort, but... Um, you have to do whatever it takes yeah. in your business. <laughs> it's been a pleasure speaking with you actually and uh, even when the first time when I heard you speak and even today, there are lots of takeaways that I always take away from you know speaking mm -hmm. with you. Uh, so thank you for being on She Means Business. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best. For thank the you so much. Yeah. And uh, to all our viewers, uh, stay happy, stay tuned and stay focused and do not forget to subscribe to the channel.